The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and the market somewhat saving itself in the overnight session. Uh, I mean, not dire prices, right? I guess we were down only 5, 10 points, something like that. But you see that it's getting this whole acceleration that you got from 2 o'clock yesterday. We were trading at about 45.74. You drive down to 45.54 for the entire overnight session. About 6 a.m. this morning, you start trading higher, and the S&Ps are up by 14 points. That's 3 tenths percent. We'll push in 45.70 on the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, you're really catching a bid, man. 15,919. We're up by almost 7 tenths percent, 103 points. Dow is flat. Russell, negative by one right now. You jump over to Bitcoin. We hit almost 45,000 yesterday. We're at 43,000. 775, not bad. How about crude? 69.11 was the price yesterday. We're off that low barely, but boy, you're talking about $70 crude. You got to love $70 crude when you're at the pump. Uh, everybody getting a little bit of stimulus when you're paying less money at the gasoline pump. Gold up about $4 this morning. We hit 2057. We're at 2052 right now. And you jump to notes and bonds ahead of jobs Friday. Tomorrow, we got the 10 year right now, chopping around a bit. You see a little bit of volatility even this morning. We were just down at 110.24. Just like that, we're back above 111 right now. And yeah, 111, excuse me. What are we talking about for a yield when we're at 111? 4.14% as we come into Jobs Friday tomorrow. We are now six days out from a Fed meeting, Wednesday, December 13th. It's going to be coming quick. We got the 10 year. Put that back on a daily. And yeah, we got a little bit of a pullback potentially, right, on today's bar. But you're talking about higher highs and higher lows coming at you across the board. As we got a positive market coming into things. The 30 year right now, negative 16 ticks at 120.02. Um, but I mean, if you make a channel line here, just for a little bit of context for a moment, right? I mean, where do you match that up? Even just going off, we were, and this is just cherry picking one area but pretty awesome channel line forming now let's back it out even a little bit more than that we'll put it on an hourly uh yeah so we're nearing the bottom portion of that channel line where it falls that's anyone's guess it's an art not a science do you match it up to those two lows do you find a little bit of linear regression i like a little bit more linear regression when i'm putting together these channels uh, I'll have to get a full definition of linear regression. It has to do with the, the distances. Each point is away from that point, squared. Uh, knew all that stuff at one point in high school in, is it calculus probably? Math? Calculus. Probably calculus, right? Linear regression? I think so. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, we got higher yields. And it, uh, excuse me, we have lower yields, and it seems like yields are poised to go even lower, right? That trend is going to continue. We're now at the bottom portion of that trend line. You're at the bottom portion of the trend line. That would mean the 10-year and the 30-year would trade to higher price, lower yield. That's the 30-year we're looking at right there. Just for a moment, we jump to the 10-year. Not quite as well-defined, but lower lows, excuse me, higher highs and higher lows. That's the word I was looking for. Getting a little bit lost, you know. It's interesting trying to educate somebody who is outside of the market on how higher price equals lower yield because it's a little bit of gymnastics. It makes sense, of course, once you get it. But intuitively, it's a little bit difficult to understand that. Nonetheless, um, if you're in the market, you better understand it, man, especially in this environment right now with the 10-year trading right at 111, and that is right at the 50% of that full pullback we got in that market. All right, what else we got going on? We got a few headlines. Uh, and where do we kick it off with? Treasury yields climb as the Bank of Japan jitters rattle the globe. Uh, traders piling into bets that the end of the negative Bank of Japan rate is near. Seems like they might be finally pulling themselves out of there. Um, hawkish signals is the headline there. 
in terms of Japan. And let's jump over to that dollar yen. Whoops. That's dollar Canadian. Yeah, that's a move for you, man. From 147.50 to 144.75. You jump over to the dollar index. We're back to 103.79 right now in the dollar index. Euro US dollar. A little bit of higher price, you could say, but you got to jump to that gold contract. You know, seeing that type of move in the dollar yen, you could see even a bigger move you could expect. Gold's up $4. Um, you could see some bigger moves depending on what happens there in that gold contract. All right, let's jump over to Tesla for a second. So some of the headlines you'll see out there, pretty interesting. SpaceX, man, uh, it doesn't impact Tesla, but it does impact Elon Musk. And this is why he's got so much money to burn on X. It's because, yeah, he's got companies in the likes of SpaceX talking about $175 billion or more in a tender offer. Um, they just pushed 150 this summer. It's December. And just like that, they're going to add $25 billion to that number. And what is 25 on 15? Yeah, 16, 17% increase from where it was just over the summer. Market's probably up 16 or 17%. That's an interesting way to look at it, right? So they have a premium from 175, excuse me, from 150 to 175. Yeah, I guess where in the summer. If you're talking about May, yeah, the market's up that much. If you're talking about July, the market's right back to where it was. Nonetheless, uh, $175 billion. This is why he's the richest man in the world. He's got a few things going, whether it's Tesla, whether it's SpaceX, whether it's the Boring Company. I was reading something recently that the Boring Company, uh, building all those tunnels in Vegas, the, the express tunnels, um, not exactly going like he had said that they would go, nonetheless. Um, and this would put it in the likes of, I was reading something earlier, something like, yeah, the 75 biggest companies by market cap and is a private company, and you're talking about other competitors in that same area, T-Mobile, Nike, China Mobile, all of them are on $175 billion. And it makes sense, man, when you're getting money from the government, which is what they get a lot of money from NASA, et cetera, uh, yeah, that is a nice streamlined approach. Pretty remarkable, too, when you think about that he's pushed forward. And listen, I can be an Elon hater when it comes to it, some of the things he says, some, some of the things he does, but that... You know, he's building rockets that come back to Earth instead of just going out in space and exploding and saving money doing it and, and competing with. I mean, how do you start a company that competes with the likes of some of the huge defense contractors out there, whatever it is, right? The 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 Boeings of the world, the Airbuses, the, the everything out there. Um, they are on pace to book revenues of nine billion dollars this year. Not a bad revenue stream. Sales projected to rise to around 15 billion in 2024. Pretty amazing. Initial public offering of Starlink. As soon as, as late as 2024, Starlink, always in the press these days in terms of what is happening uh, with war regions, etc. Now, the next part about this, though, that's pretty amazing is that, I mean, look at how, so what is one, one the, you know, it's $9 billion is what they're taking in in revenue, Okay. So they're getting paid basically 20 times revenue, not 20 times, not not a 20 earnings per share. OK, they're getting based on 20 times revenue. Pretty remarkable when you look at that. But boy, I think they got a lot of growth, which is what the market thinks as well. Stay tuned, folks. we got a lot to talk about. We'll take a look at some of the other equities moving this morning. We'll be right back. Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We'll get the S&P futures up by about 16 points right now. That's a positive, uh, about a third of a percent trading at 4572. We got the Dow up 110, excuse me, the NASDAQ futures up 110, the Dow and the Russell barely in the positive. To talk about some of the market action this morning, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network. Check it out. Uh, and let's just jump right into it. Kevin Hinks, we got a little positive market action this morning. The main event tomorrow morning. Uh, what are you looking at in this market ahead of that event? Good morning, Tommy. Happy Thursday. Yeah, a day ahead of the biggest data point of the month that, frankly, we've been waiting for. It's, it's a little bit late that, uh, for this month, but today's an interesting day. There's not a lot going on, but there's plenty to keep you busy, like, well, the jobless claims data of 220,000. That is still indicative of a tight labor market. So not surprising that yields are higher this morning. However, why is the dollar lower? Because the yen dollar relationship with the movements or potential future movements by the Bank of Japan has got the yen dollar moving violently. Uh, so that's why you're seeing the dollar down, but yields up. It's two different stories today, Tommy. So how, what does that do for stocks? Well, at least right now, the E-minis are on a pretty slow grind higher here this morning. But I never put as much weight pre-market as I do once the market opens. So let's see what the market does, if it consolidates ahead of tomorrow's number. But at least right now, here's the other story that everyone should be watching. Yesterday, when AMD released their new Instinct MI300X chip for AI, their CEO, Lisa Su, basically said the total addressable market in AI is double the original thoughts. So AMD is going to rally today. Watch NVIDIA and other AI stocks if that, that uh, total addressable market, the opportunity there puts another, you know, rally or a bid under some of these names. So I'm watching the AI stocks today. I'm watching the dollar yen, and I'm waiting for the number tomorrow, Tommy. As if they need more fuel, right, to get going. Pretty interesting. And I got AMD up there on the Thinkorswim platform. Yeah, up almost $4 to above 120 from a close of under 117 yesterday. Are you looking for any surprises from the Fed tomorrow? Uh, excuse me, from the jobs number. I, let me rephrase. 
for the jobs number tomorrow, Kevin, is there anything that really could impact, you know, the Fed decision that we get next Wednesday? Or are we kind of, you know, of course we know a, a, an insane surprise could change things. That's probably not expected. But is this just a number we're kind of going to go forward through and then we look forward to the January, December number? Do you, do you expect that this number could change anything that the Fed may be doing next Wednesday? You know, the reason I like the employment number, the reason I think it's the most important data point of the month is that it gives you the strength of the labor market, but it also gives you inflation with the wages data. So watch for the wages. The expectations on wages are for up 0.3 on month over month. That's a tick higher than last month at up 0.2 and 4% on year over year. That's only down a tenth of a percent from last month from 4.1 so watch those numbers it's that you know the the expectations for jobs are 180,000 and about 3.9 unemployment rate so that relationship jobs unemployment rate month over month wages year over year wages that's what will drive tomorrow's trade Tommy it's pretty cool we get that number and then we get a fed meeting what five days after that uh with that in mind do you guys have any equities you're talking about coming up at 12 o'clock on fast market today Kevin Great day today to, for for watching because we're, we'll we'll cover Lululemon, which comes out with earnings after the bell. We'll look at Broadcom and DocuSign. Three fun names to trade today, Tommy. Three names that have a little bit of volatility, uh, and yeah, Lulu. Um, always some volatility. I jumped over there, and what are we looking at? Almost like a twenty-five dollar move. It looks like priced into their numbers um, coming out. Kevin, I appreciate the time as always on a busy morning. We don't get to talk to you tomorrow, so it's always interesting on Thursday, especially on the Jobs Friday number. When we come back Tuesday, we're going to know a lot more about this market, and then we get a Fed meeting one day after that, which is pretty cool. Uh, have a great day, Kevin. Have a great program. We look forward to watching, and we'll talk to you next week, man. You too, Tommy. Great talking to you. You too. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks. Lululemon. Uh, yeah, and check out. I mean, Lulu is always. I know they're talking about Lulu. They're talking about Broadcom. Look at this run that it's had this year, man. From 300 to 460, you chopped around at that low for what, almost a year and a quarter? 15, 16 months, you're down at that price level of about 300 with a base, you make it to 250 in the middle of 2022. It's been a one-way trip to higher prices, man. But guess what? Now you're coming up to all-time highs, you're coming up to an area that was resistance, right? That you traded well off that price level and you're coming into an area where expectations right how high is the bar how low is the bar you talk about sometimes and you jump over to the analyze tab we jump over to the options that's some old trade i was looking at and yeah you're looking at uh about a 26 dollar move priced into their numbers if you want action through tomorrow yeah which is what it is right now i'm just looking yeah so they have options every week these ones end friday they're pricing in about $25 move for their earnings event, but if you want action for the entirety of it, you're talking about 26 bucks. So what does that mean? Almost $25 in the implied volatility is gonna get sucked out overnight, and then you're gonna have $1 of implied volatility. And I mean, look at how it's not much you have to go out. I guess this is <clears throat> these are the holiday weeks, as in, you know, on a week-by-week -week basis, right? You go out further on these Lula ones, you can see you want action through tomorrow, you got to pay a $26 move in either direction. You go out through the end of January, and you're not even doubling that. But the earnings event will do everything, as we know. All right, this market's just melting higher as we come into this open. You got the S&Ps up now 19 points, 45.74. So I said we got back the action from yesterday afternoon where you chopped around. But boy, it's got another 24, 25 points to get up to that high of yesterday morning at about 9.20 coming into the opening bell. It's looking very parabolic. To comment, uh, our man Basil Chapman, he talks about those parabolic, symmetrical formations, right? Boy, this thing's looking pretty symmetrical. Maybe you get a little bit of chop on the way. But it looks like the market's liking what's going on right now. You jump over to the 10 years, see how we're moving? Yeah, we're just chopping around. We're down a little bit on the 10-year right now. Dollar yen might be a mover today, that's for sure. We're chopping around at about 145. And you get the dollar index sitting back almost near 104 yet again. We're right back to where we were 24 hours ago in the dollar index, which is pretty dramatic when you think about the move that we've had in the yen during that time. Yeah, S&P's up by 18. Let's check around some of the FANG stocks as we come into the opening bell here. 
Yeah, all these stocks ripped lower on the open yesterday, and that's an area we haven't got back. We've gotten back basically after that first acceleration yesterday. You got Apple, though. They're trading up by almost a dollar this morning to 193. Kevin mentioned we're going to watch some of those chip stocks. AMD, they're going to open up almost $4. NVIDIA was higher by about a dollar last time I checked. Dollar, dollar fifty. Yeah, they're still, what, $20 almost from where they were at the open yesterday, even with what a AMD said. Intel shares, yeah, up about 50 cents. That's more than a percent, though, when you look at it on a percentage basis. We check out some of the other fag stocks. Microsoft shares basically flat this morning. You jump over to Google. Well, there you go. What's going on with Google? Google's up at 137. What's going on with Google? Is that AID? That's, that's off of the AMD deal, I think. Okay, we'll check that one out as well. Check out Google. We're coming back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. Ho, ho, ho! It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy holiday, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at S&P up by 19 points right now, trading at 45.75. That's a positive move of four tenths percent in the S&Ps. Nasdaq 100 were positive by six tenths percent. A little bit of a sell-off there on that open just as we came in. You get the Dow catching a little bit of a bid. So what do we get? Nasdaq 100 pulls back a little bit on the open. Dow gets a little bit of a pop. Remember, the Dow was basically flat coming into things. We're positive by 80. S&P is up by 21. You get the Russell up by three right now. We jump over to crude. 7029, we check in on gold, 
2050 on the dot right now on gold. We check in on notes and bonds. Yeah, we're sitting basically where we kick things off. And let's check out the dollar index as we wrap around. 103.81, we look over to the yield, uh, excuse me, the dollar yen, and it's continuing. Probably going to take out that low, man. I mean, look at this. You, you got to love markets, man, right? You talk about a risk-reward ratio and a double top there. Yeah, you could be wrong. Okay, of course you could be wrong. But boy, that's a beautiful area to trade into. And now you're pulling back and you're below 145, just like that in your dollar yen as the market climbs higher with the S&Ps up by half a percent right now. All right, let's jump over to the journal piece this morning. The, state, the headline is obvious. The most important debate on Wall Street is where inflation is going and whether it's quote unquote licked. Not everyone's sure. It is coasting to the Fed's target rate. The preferred inflation measure in terms of what you're talking about here, okay? This is the personal consumption expenditure price index, 12 month change. This is year over year. Does it get any better than that, right? Pretty remarkable, the move we've had when you put it on that thing. That's the case for optimism right there, man, okay? Core personal consumption expenditure price index, okay? The 12 month, look where the three month annualized is. The one month annualized, well below where the, tre three, where the 12 month is, right? A big driver of inflation in 2021 and 22. First, it was goods people were spending money on. And then what? And then it was leisure and hospitality. And we saw that yesterday in ADP was the first time that you saw a decline in those numbers of 7,000 since early 2021. Okay. Later, pro labor productivity, that is a big help to inflation. Kevin Hinks was talking about that yesterday in the ADP. That's why they have it here, okay? Yeah, so this is where they start talking about it. Another consequence of the pandemic, many older workers left their jobs, replaced by less experienced employees, younger, that was one factor that dragged down productivity. That has now worked its way out of the market. That made it harder, though, for businesses to meet the demand. Prices went up. If you're being productive, you can meet that demand with less workers. You don't have to pay the wages. You don't have to charge as much. It makes sense. Productivity is going up. Real GDP growth by quarter, annualized. Quite, quite, the, quite the number, man, um, that we've pulled back to. Labor force quit rates coming down. We have a bunch of cool charts in here. The rent index, right, versus the PCE housing index. Six-month annualized change. September of 2021. That was the big one, huh? Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Housing market is something, man. You got jolts. Hard to deny the trend there. And look at where it's been, right? We're almost back. We just needed under 8 million. I think we're with an 8 million handle. Employee cost index, hotels and motels, six-month price change. I mean, <clears throat> absolutely remarkable, man. Yeah, so nonetheless, this is all important. Some interesting charts in there, but we get the important data point tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning. 23 hours from right now, we get that data point, and then you get the Fed following things after that. We jump over to IBM. Check this thing out. We breaking out of there? All right. Now, this is where it becomes an art, not a science. Delete that one. So you have IBM here. This is going back to where they dropped out of bed in the year 2020 for COVID. It's pretty remarkable that's where it is, man. Let's go back even further. Yeah. So look at this, right? IBM on a monthly basis. <clears throat> look at the retest of the channels, man. Gotta love it. Okay, you break out once, you come and retest it. Nope, you get back down. Now, first I'm talking about this downward channel that IBM was in. That started in 2013, okay? So what happens? You trade lower, you bounce, you trade lower, you bounce, you trade lower, you bounce. You finally get above the channel line. You come back into it. You get above it again. You come back. You test it on three separate months, and then, boom, you take off this year from 125 to 160 or so. 
The thing I will say is that we're now pumping up against the upper boundary line of that channel line. That's probably where it matches up. Might be able to put it a little bit lower. On a monthly basis, it might be breaking above it. Now, you put it on that weekly basis, we've had a couple breaks, okay? It's not a perfect science, as I like to say. It is an art, and this is where you can see it's an art. Where's the upper boundary of that channel line? If anybody tells you they know for sure, per science, it's all a risk-reward assessment, folks. Nobody knows for sure, okay? Channel lines are real. That's what I believe. But to know exactly where they exist is not exactly how the science works. Otherwise, it would literally be a science with equations, and it would be solved. It's not solved, okay? But yeah, looks like we're breaking a little bit above or if that right at that line. Now, I bring up IBM, IBM because, yeah, you have their CEO and it does. It's pretty remarkable, right? And that's what accounts for part of that downtrend channel from 2013, man. They're trying to get included in the AI story. And you think about it, right? Big Blue. I mean, IBM had Big Blue competing against... Remember chess, all this stuff? They were at the forefront, man. How do they not capitalize on that small lead to be able to, whether it's gain funding, right, push things forward, et cetera? Um, and they're angling for a comeback story, and, you know, they're in an uptrend channel. Yeah, they're selling some things. They're trying to dig into AI. But keep your eye on that one. I wanted to talk about it especially because you look at those two channel lines. They behave so well and that we're bumping up against that upper boundary line. So, boy, you ever get an acceleration above that area, you're probably heading that back to the highs of 206. You jump over to IBM shares. You're talking about a company valued at – come on, where are we? There we are. $146 billion. Not quite SpaceX. We'll, we'll value everything in SpaceX these days. Pretty remarkable when you look at a company like IBM – not even valued what SpaceX is going to be valued. SpaceX was above $150 billion over the summer. IBM at 143 This market, you talk about relentless to the upside, man. Look at this Dow. Up 157 We were flat at the open. The S&P is at $45.78. We're looking for symmetry. Symmetry ends at $45.97. We'll see if the market can get there. You get the Dow right now. Oh, excuse me. The NASDAQ, not the Dow. The NASDAQ is plowing higher, of course. Uh, and yeah, let's check back on Google. Google, look at this run, man. Google up by 5.8%. AMD up by 5.1%. NVIDIA up by 1.6%. Microsoft up half a percent. Apple pushing the highs of yesterday, up 1.3%. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about, so we'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 21 points, just kind of hanging around a bit. NASDAQ 100 surging higher. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 135 points. That's 9 tenths percent. Nine -tenths percent. I mean, look at this. 200 points down. 200 points up, just like that, in a normal trading session prior to the biggest economic data point of the month. Tomorrow, as Kevin mentioned, we get November data, December 8th. It's usually the first Friday of the month except for when that calls on, falls on the first of the month, I believe. As in last Friday was the first. In any other session, I think they give themselves a day at least. So we're getting this data on December 8th for November, and then we get that Fed decision uh, five days from then. Yeah, six days from right now, December 13th. You're going to see a lot of headlines like this, and uh, we'll see. Where we go, after so many false downs, the market is convinced the Fed will finally cut. And boy, you can see those areas, of course, when you take a look at the, the chart. As in pretty remarkable that where are we? We're right back to where we were a year ago when the market definitely got a little bit, uh, you could say ahead of itself across the board. But nonetheless, we'll see where it plays out. But I think this time it's real. They have to cut at some point, folks, because they're still at almost 5.5%. Does anybody believe we're still at 5.5%? I don't think we're at 5.5%. I don't think we're at 2%. I think we got a long way to go, but they're overly restrictive at some point when we've seen the numbers diminish a bit. And that's going to be the case that they're going to have to make, which is going to be a difficult case to make, arguing that they are still remaining highly restrictive while cutting. But that's the argument they're going to make. Yeah, and this just talks about the number of scenarios, et cetera. Um, and talking about that, you know, the Fed's preferred, preferred inflation gauge, which we keep talking about, is at 3% down from 7.1. You know, it's interesting when you look at it, right? I brought up the journal article first that had the chart on it with that drop from 7.1 to 3. Bloomberg has the article talking about that as well. And then, you know, Neil Dutta, so he is director of economic research at Renaissance Macro Research. He's on Bloomberg a lot. He's been right a lot recently, man. And he's talking about disinflation in the pipeline. The data's lining up. We're on a glide path now to a rate cut probably by March. <laughs> the only thing I will say is don't expect the market to rip higher or yields to dramatically drop when there is a lot priced into this market. And that's what you have to remember as well. Right. We were just above 5% and we are sitting now at 4.14%, 4.146 to be exact. 
All right, what else we got pulled up? We could wade into the Harvard and Penn um, decision rolling around. It's interesting what shows up on Bloomberg, man. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. We can all, you can research it if you want, man. Um, quite the headline in terms of talking about genocide, the war, et cetera. Quite the headlines, to say the least. And I think they regret their performance up there already. Uh, it's unfortunate what's going on across the board. But boy, that that that's, it's 946. The program ends in 14 minutes. We don't got enough time for that one. All right, let's jump to some of the headlines. We saw it here. We're talking about AMD. Um, Meta and Microsoft say they'll buy AMD's new AI chip as an alternative to NVIDIA. So that's probably why you're not seeing the acceleration you're seeing across the board in some of the action in NVIDIA. Still up by a percent, man. Now, NVIDIA, you're talking about a company with 2.5 billion shares outstanding. Okay, you're up by five bucks. This thing's added 10, 12 billion dollars in market cap. That's a 1% move on a company valued at 2.5 trillion dollars. But I say that, and then you go to Google. Google's got 12.5 billion shares outstanding, and you're up seven dollars. So they have just added 80 plus billion dollars to their market cap. Absolutely wild when some of these big equities move like they are this morning with Google charging higher. You have Apple shares up 1.2%. They're up $2.30. That's what, a $30 billion plus move for Apple shares? Just remarkable moves across the board. Dow and Russell rolling over to a little bit of red territory. All right, let's see what else we had pulled up here. Is that the one? Uh... Yeah, this headline was out there at CNBC, trying to bring down drug prices, and boy, it's a political season, man. Everybody's in line with that. And we'll see where it plays out, but you're going to see constant headlines across the board here. And this one talking about the Biden administration, administration asserts power to seize drug patents and move to slash higher prices. Um, certain costly medications is what they say in here. New framework outlining the factors the federal agencies should consider in determining whether to use a controversial policy known as March in Rights. And yeah, you should see that push forward, man. All right. These drug companies, you need money to innovate. That's the bottom line. But boy, I'm not sure how we're going to be paying for health insurance when you go down the line, I look at everything through the lens of my son now, folks. He's about to be three years old in February. Tommy's going to be three in February. That was a fast three years. Remember that? COVID kind of blurred everything um, in terms of a concept of time. But yeah, what's it going to be like when he's 30 or 40, right? Got to be able to make sure that you can afford health care at that time and, you know, among any things, many things, right? Yeah, we talked about inflation. Uh, this one's interesting from Liv. It seems like the saga plows on. John Rahm is set to join Liv. I thought they were merging. We'll see if they do. Uh, that's the reigning Masters champion. Yeah. You got a December 31st deadline to join forces. Can't keep track of what's going on here. He's the number third golfer in the world. And he's a ma the reigning Masters champion. They have a December 31st deadline to finalize a deal to join forces. And so how's that play out? I don't know. But it is remarkable how much money some of these players got and turned down. Now, what's so interesting is that he's previously been against it, okay? And some of the things he said... Um, He even said an offer of $400 million wouldn't change his mind and that his priority was playing against the best competition. He dismissed Lib's format as not a golf tournament and as recently as July laughed off rumors of him making a switch. So never believe what people are saying up front when they're negotiating in the back. I mean, maybe he maybe he realized that the PGA president, right, was, was doing the same thing to him when he was in there defending the PGA. The PGA was there be, negotiating behind his back and he said, you know what? I'm a sucker for not taking nine figures, man. Yeah. I don't I don't know if I'd be doing business with the, the Saudis, though. 
You never know what you're getting into when you get into business like that, man. Um, do you really need more than 50, 75 million to become partners with the Saudis? I don't know. They might ask you to do something in the future for all the, that money you might not be comfortable with. All right, folks, we're coming back. We're going to talk a little bit of Tiger Dollars. We're going to talk a little bit of uh, webinars. Get ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. Ho, ho, ho! It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the Dow sneaking into red territory off by six. Russell catches a bid, man. You're almost up by 0.5 percent in the Russell. You're positive by eight points just like that. Look at that run, man. You're talking about a 14 point acceleration just in the last 10 minutes or so to higher prices on the Russell. S&Ps give back some of the gain on the open. You're still positive by 17. NASDAQ 100 positive by 96 points. But you give back what? Almost 100, man. Yeah, just like that. We got volatility. We jump over to the VIX this morning. Volatility index at 13.15. We jump back to the yen with some action. Yeah, making new lows, 144.48. Pay attention to that yen. All right, what else we got, folks? You heard the ads, uh, some great ads out there. Our man Jacob Shoup's putting together. Appreciate that, Jacob. 
Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale, folks. Running for the next 10 days only. It ends next weekend. You can get double the bonus that we normally have, either, either a 20, 30, or 40% bonus on your purchase, okay? You just come over to the front page of TFNN. You click on that Holiday Tiger Dollar Sale. Tiger Dollars can be used for any newsletter, any webinar, any service, whether it's Tim Ward's, okay, coming up a week from today, December 14th. We'll talk about that. Whether you want to sign up for the opening call, our man Basil Chapman, he has just launched a webinar coming up Wednesday, December 20th for opening call subscribers. You can sign up for the opening call to attend that. If you're already an opening call subscriber, you got nothing to do. You'll be able to attend for free as part of your subscription. But the best part of it all, folks, is you buy the Tiger Dollars. You can go to Tim Ward uh, a week from today. You can sign up for the opening call. You can sign up for Larry's Trading webinars he does next year. You can sign up for my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. If you're a current subscriber, check it out, folks. If you're looking to subscribe, check it out. And uh, yeah, don't forget about Tim Ward a week from today. He's on with Tom O'Brien, my dad, uh, I believe this afternoon. Uh, I'm not sure. What was it? And Basil, he's going to talk about his webinar. He's coming up next, folks. Stay tuned for the opening call. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.